Okay, um, hi, welcome to this video. Um, so today we're going to go over sorting um, and we're going to continue uh, talking a little bit about the performance of algorithms or the analysis of algorithms talk, uh, topic, sort of in preparation for talking about that in a little bit more detail next time. Um, so uh, there's actually many, many sorting algorithms and we're only looking at uh, not particularly good sorting algorithms, so much better ones are known. So if you're interested in the topic, uh, I encourage you to maybe look up the Wikipedia article, see how kind of how many are out there. So we're going to look at the, the three our textbook had. The, our textbook had two in the chapter that we're on right now, bubble sort and insertion sort. And it had one back at chapter eight. I didn't mention it then. Hopefully you read about it, uh, but it had selection sort in, in there um, as well. Um, okay, so um, let me... Um, I'm just going to bring the textbook up here real quickly. You know, so... Uh, we'll look at the code. You should make certain that you understand the code for these sorting algorithms, how they're doing it. But before you can understand the code, you know, you need to kind of understand the algorithm at, at a high level, what it does. So bubble sort is conceptually the simplest sorting algorithm. So um, so initially, if, if our list, uh, just our um, figures from the textbook. So you know, if we have a list of five items here, and it's initial, initially unsorted. So the idea with bubble sort is you just compare adjacent items, and if they're out of order, you just swap them, okay? So the, the, the effect of that is, is one pass through. Well, whatever the largest value is in the, the array, if you keep, so if we compare 10 and 7, we'll swap those. 7 will move up, 10 will move down. Then when we compare 10 to 19, we won't swap. But since 19 is the, the largest value, it will keep getting swapped, okay? So every pass, single pass through, through uh, a bubble sort will cause the largest item uh, to bubble, to bubble to the, the last index of the array, okay? So, so and, and you can't just do one pass, okay? So, uh, the, so after we've, we've done one pass, we've only got one item to be guaranteed to be correctly sorted. Now we have to do, another, we have to do up, actually for bubble source, we're gonna do exactly uh, N minus one uh, of these passes, these bubbling passes. So we do it once, we get the largest item in there. Second time, we'll get the second largest. Third time, we'll get the third largest. Fourth time we'll get the fourth largest, and we don't have to do any more after that because we know that the smallest will be will have to be at index zero after we do n minus one passes, right? So yeah, that that was the first pass. On the second pass, and I, and, and on the second and subsequent passes, you stop. You don't have to compare that one, so we only go from index zero up to index three in this case. So on our second pass, sixteen was already in place, so it got. Um, it didn't get bubbled, but uh, but ten actually kind of got bubbled down uh, uh, there. Uh, oh, another thing, we we didn't implement this, and it didn't implement this in the textbook. But um, I mean, it is possible that your array gets sorted before you do all of your n minus one outer passes. So a good little extra check to make bubble sort a little bit better performer is to check if we actually cause any. Uh, any swaps to have to happen, and if none happen, then you know that you were sorted, and you can stop right at that uh, at the end of that um, that outer uh, iteration. Okay, so let's let's uh, as usual. Um, I have some example code for you. Um, actually, before we get started with this, um, in this example code, um, I've got a big list of, of just names of text files. I will post this as well along with the code. There's like twelve thousand names in here. Um, the, the name of the file is, is I, well, I call it list of names.txt, and I'll post it there. But um, there's, there's a function, load list from file, that loads this. Uh, you do have to make certain, I, I put a little exit in here, so, you know, you, wanna, you need to make certain that you're actually finding and loading this file correctly. So, again, it, until you're certain that you're correctly loading the file, you might want to put a breakpoint here. So, uh, I mean, you could, I mean, you could just put an absolute path name on here. I discourage using absolute path names, uh, but uh, if if you can't figure out any other way, and I do think you need you need like a double backslash um, for string constants uh, for for this backslash. Um, so anyway, if if you put your file in um, wherever, so like users, my username, download. 
uh, you could do something like that, right? But I encourage you to learn how to figure out the relative path name. So to, to do it with just the, the name of the file, uh, we have to know the, the, this is what's known as using a relative path name. So we have to know where the program is actually running from. And that can be a little bit unclear if you're running your program in like a debugger in an integrated development environment like this. So it turns out uh, for Visual Studio, so this is going to be different if you're using a different development environment, so you might have to do some searching around. For Visual Studio, uh, if you're building in debug mode like this, um, and for me, um, I've got my Visual Studio projects um, under users. My username is dash um, source. Visual Studio creates these directory source repos, and then every time I create a new project, uh, it creates a directory. So we're working on W05 sorting here. Um, and, uh, oh, um, let me pause for just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, um, as I was saying, so it, it turns out Visual Studio... Um, um, where it it what's considered the current working directory um so you have to know is you have to find your project um and and there, there's a subdirectory every time you create a project there's there's a subdirectory like w week 05 dash sorting and then within there there's a, yet another folder with the same name another subdirectory um and that's what it can so if if you build in debug uh, this this is where where you should find your source file if you add your file to the project w05sorting.cpp. You need to put the uh, the text file in that same directory if you want to use a relative path name. Okay, um, and you can check that. Um, so let me build that. So uh, the other thing with this is that um, you know just be careful. Um, let's see, make sure I got I got a breakpoint here, but but. Um, uh, you know, so I'm trying to be a little bit defensive. So if I don't find the file, I don't, I don't, fool, I don't uh, kind of pretend as if we found something. So we just exit immediately. So that that's pretty common. If if you need some, if, you know, so it doesn't really make any sense to try and sort uh, a list of names if you didn't actually read anything in. So we just exit immediately. But but uh, but yeah, you might want to put a breakpoint here and check that you're correctly loading the file. So um, so let me just double check again. So here. Uh, when, after we try and open the file, we do a test, so it should skip over that if we if you've correctly given the file name and it was correctly able to open it um, and and create a input file stream in order to load the the, the file from. So uh, if we step over that, um, so um, so yeah, that's just a word about opening the file. Let me look at the bubble sort at the actual um, um, function. So. Um, I pretty much used exactly the, the code that was in the textbook, um, except um, I added a little bit um, so we can kind of count the number of key comparisons and the number of item assignments whenever we call bubble sort, okay? So again, um, let me just go through the description. So in order to do that bubbling conceptually that we just talked about, uh, all, all the three sorting algorithms that we're going to look at have an outer loop and an inner loop. So the outer loop controls a, a pass, what, what I called a single pass or a single iteration, uh, and we only have to do n minus one of these. So notice we start at one and go up to less than length. So if we went from zero to length, we'd be doing length or, uh, um, or, or n of these. So uh, it's common in the analysis of algorithms, I might have mentioned this in the previous video, that whatever the size is of the number of items that we need to run our algorithm on, we just usually call that n. So I, I probably, I, I kind of go back to just saying n as shorthand for the number of items, right? So, so anyway, this outer loop runs n minus one times, right? Um, and then this inner loop runs from zero up to length minus iteration. So the first time when iteration uh, is one is um, is one, it runs from zero up to um, length minus one, n minus one, right? So again, it runs n minus one the first time, but the second time it runs n minus two. So so it runs conceptually the, the first time it runs through the whole list. You know the whole list is unsorted, and then the last time through the outer loop, uh, it only has to to go to compare the last two items and swap them if needed. So it does n the first time in the inner loop, then n minus one. So actually, it averages n divided by two. So um, if you go back, we'll, we'll come back to this later. I won't bring it up, but but the the number of times we have to iterate in this inner loop, the number of times we have to hit this if statement is approximately n times n divided by two. 
um, okay? So, so you got to think about that, convince yourself of that, what, what we're, you know, make sure you're following that. So, so on the inner loop then, we're, we're just doing all that bubbling. So we're just checking if, if the item, so here, the way to read this in English, if the item at the index is greater than the item at the, at the index next to it, one bigger, that means it's out of order. So if this item is out of order from the item next to it, we swap them. So relatively, they'll be in order then. The, the smaller one will be at the smaller index, and the larger one will be at the larger index after we swap. And then we swap by using the temporary location. So, so we save one of the values to temporary. We, we move the one to the, to the one we just saved because we can overwrite that, and then we take the temporary to, the, uh, to, to, to where we went. So the, the result from these last three um, assignments is to, to swap the, the two values at index an index plus one if you're out of order, all right? So here, um, we're going to be uh, comparing the performance of these sorting algorithms by counting up the number of comparisons. Our, our textbook calls it key comparisons, didn't, didn't, didn't give a good explanation of what that means, and also the number of item assignments, okay? So key comparisons is just the number of times we have to compare our items that are in the list that we're trying to sort, okay? So anytime we're comparing whether uh, our two items are greater or less than or something like that, and there's only one place in bubble sort where we do that. We, we uh, in the inner loop here, we compare these two items, and if they're out of order, then we actually then we swap them. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention uh, one uh, one big change. I did uh, you know I was getting tired of, of using integers all the time for the example, so we've got actually a list of strings um, here instead. So we're sorting a list of strings here. Um, um, rather than a list of integers, but strings are you know defined for like the comparison operator and for the equal operator, so we could use them. The, the code would work exactly the same if I just change string to integers and used a list of integers here. Okay. Um, all right. So that that's that's the bubble sort algorithm. One one final thing before I go here, I think the in my opinion the textbook has a slight error. So when, when it talks about the performance of bubble sort in terms of the number of item assignments, it just says the number of item assignments is n times n minus 1 over 4. Um, and the reason why that is, so if you're following the key comparisons, I said it was kind of like n times uh, n minus 1 times n divided by 2, and that's kind of where this is coming from uh, for for figuring out the performance because we do one key comparison every time through the loop. So there's going to be exactly n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Um, and that's effectively because we're doing this one key comparison here every time we're doing an iteration, okay? And we're actually also, uh, now, uh, I'm sorry, we only swap, though, when these are out of order. So you would expect about... Half the time, the, the two adjacent items will be in the correct order. So it, probabilistically, if, if, the, if the list is well um, um, unsorted, if it's well randomized, mixed up, half the time they'll be out of order and half the time they'll be in order. So we'll only actually go inside this if loop one half the, half the time when, when we would actually do this inner loop. So that's why it's divided by two rather than divided by four. Okay, So... Um, so in terms of the, the number of item assignments, it's exactly the same, except for we have to divide by number t by, uh, by one half again, because we actually only go in there on average about half the time. But where the textbook got it wrong, though, is that we're actually doing three item assignments in order to do the swap. So, so it really should be times three here. All right. So anyway, that, that's why I changed it to three instead of... Uh, counting that as one. I mean, it doesn't really, uh, later on I'll talk about it, it doesn't really make a difference here. That's just a constant. Um, so, uh, but um, in, in terms of comparing the performance of these algorithms, um, but, um, uh, but we want to be exact here. So the last thing we do is we kind of log, I added in here, we log um, the, the information about the number of times we do iteration, uh, the number of key comparisons. These should be equal, notice, you know, so there's no difference in this algorithm. Every time we do an iteration, we do one key comparison. We're going to do exactly the same number of these, uh, right? So whatever the size of the length, length of the list is, whatever, whatever, whatever n is, we know exactly how many of these inner iterations are. We can count them up, right? And it's exactly n times n minus 1 divided by 2, uh, or length times length minus 1 divided by 2. 
Um, but yeah, here, you know, we may or may not do the swap. That that depends on what items we have in the list and how uh, un, how out you know randomized, out of order they are, that kind of thing. So, um, so I'm not going to step through this. Uh, you should make certain that you understand all these sorting algorithms. Um, let me, um, yeah, we already got past reading in here. Let's uh, let me set a breakpoint um, right uh, here after the bubble sort. So for the bubble sort. Um, you know, we, we, we load our list of, of strings. Another kind of thing here is um, um, if you have a slow computer, it could take quite a, I've, I've actually got about 12,000 names in this file, in this uh, text file. So, so if you got a faster computer, you can try 10,000 or even 12,000. Um, I'm, I'm actually running, creating these videos on a not all that fast computer, so um, we'll see. So I only did 2,500. So in are there are or the list length is, is going to be 2,500 for all these examples I run today, okay? So we actually, um, I actually show a method for getting the real time for actually how long it takes to call bubble sort. So we start a clock before we call bubble sort, um, and then we, we get another clock after, and then the difference of those tells us how much time has elapsed. Um, and then from the messages that bubble sort prints out, we can, we can, compare that to the expected number of key comparisons and the expected average number of item assignments. All right, So that's what we're doing in this code that I gave you so that we can better see the actual performance and hopefully understand the actual performance of these sorting algorithms. So let's, let's continue and run it on to that uh, uh, point right here where we're done with the uh, bubble sort. So it takes uh, about almost six seconds to, to do the 2,500 here. So notice um, so that uh, the the number of iterations, which is also the same as the number of key comparisons for bubble sort, so so uh, n times n minus one divided by two is three hundred twelve thousand seven hundred fifty, and indeed we actually do perform that number of iterations and number of key comparisons. So um, um, so that's three million. So for a a list of two thousand five hundred names, we have to do over three million comparisons doing the bubble sort here. Um, and notice we have to do approximately um, half that number, but times three. So instead of three million, we have to do about one and a half million, but it, but times three. So about four and a half million. We, we would expect on again this this in this case it's an average. It depends uh, on how the items are sorted, on on how many actual swaps we would have to do, how many actual item assignments. So we actually did a little bit more than that, but but approximately four million five hundred thousand here. In this case, all right. Um, so that's bubble sort, and, and you know the the other reason to print these out is to show that that the the numbers that the textbook come up with are correct. So our expectations on the terms of key comparisons and and item assignments are what we would expect. You know, again, the, this one should be exact for bubble sort, and this one is only an average, but it should be close in terms of the item assignments, the number of swaps we perform. So. Um, all right, let's move on. So um, let's look at the insertion sort. Um, oh, let, let me talk about it. So the, the, the bubble sort and the insertion sort were in our chapter um, 12 here that we're working on. Um, oh, sorry, so chapter 16. So uh, conceptually, again, conceptually, the way bubble sort works, um, so, so bubble, uh, sorry, insertion sort. So, so insertion sort and the selection sort we're going to look at next, um, they, they, they keep, the idea of a sorted portion of the list and an unsorted portion of the list. So for insertion sort, um, it didn't it didn't show this here in the example, but initially we just say that that only the item at index zero is sorted because a a list of, of size one is by definition sorted. There's only one item, so it's in the correct order. Uh, and then we consider all the other items from index one to the last item to be unsorted. Okay. But uh, looking at the example here from our textbook, um, if this portion of the, the list of uh, eight items in this case is sorted, and you can see it's sorted, so the items from zero to four are sorted, uh, what we do is we look at the next item and we're going to insert it uh, into the list into its correct position. So 23 should go between 18 and 25. So what we do is we temporarily save 23 in, in, a, in, in a temporary memory, in, in, a, in a temp variable. Then we shift 30 up to index 4, we shift 25 up to index 3, and then once we've shifted the items we need to, then 
we can overwrite, you know, we can we can write twenty three into where it needs to go into index two, um, and um, yeah, this is what it's showing. So twenty three goes into a temp. We copy uh, thirty to here, twenty five to here, um, and then we can move. You know, we can insert twenty five into its last correct position. So after we've done this, and we have to do multiple passes of this, so that was showing one pass, our outer loop. After we've done one pass, one more item has been inserted to its correct location in the list, and then we do uh, another pass to the next item. So next time we would have to insert 17 down here and shift 18 through 30 up one first so we can in insert 17 at index one. All right, so conceptually that's what insertion sort um, is doing. Um, so um, let's, uh, let's let's look at the, the the code for insertion sort up here. Um, so um, insertion sort is a little bit more complex, right? So um, so like I said, so the hour loop. You should understand from what we said. So we start initially considering that the item at index zero is sorted. Uh, and the I, the index is from 1 to length, or 1 to n, or 1 to n minus 1, since we have a 0 indexed array, are the unsorted portion of the list, right? So that's why the outer loop starts at 1. So then we check. So if the item at, at um, index 1 is less than the item left to it, that means it's out of order, so we have to swap it. So notice, though, we didn't show this in the example, so it, it could be that the item is actually bigger than any of the items uh, in the sorted portion of the list. That means that it's already in its correct position. So in that in that case, we don't have to do any shifting. We can just skip over and check the next one. So that's kind of the best case. We do no work um, if the, the item currently that we're looking at in the unsorted portion of the list is bigger than any item in the sorted portion, right? But... Um, if it's not, it's out of order, and we have to insert it. So we only we only get into here and do this inner loop to do the insertion uh, if the next item was out of order and needs to be inserted into the list. Okay, so we do the things that we talked about. We, we first save the item that's out of order into a temporary location, and we remember where that is. Um, and then here, this do loop, um, I mean, you know, you should kind of look through this yourself, but it basically does that shifting. So it, it does the shifting, um, and we're checking here. So here is how we check to, to know when we're done uh, shifting. So, uh, because, um, uh, sorry, let me just pause for a second. Okay, um, as I was saying, so um, this is kind of an important thing here. So um, this is checking w when we shift far enough. So, you know, by comparing uh, the item to, to temp here, we know when we've gotten to the to the to the location where we need to um, insert the item into, and, and, and we can stop shifting. Okay, so I mean, it could be the case that we have to to, sh to insert the item all the way at index zero, so we don't have to go shift everything. But usually, if we're going to again, uh, you know, if you want to analyze, um, you know, how many times we have to do this inner loop, uh, it's going to depend on where we end up inserting it. On average, we're going to insert somewhere in the middle. So, so on average, it's going to be half the size of the sorted list uh, before we get to the location where we have to insert to. So, um, yeah, the, the analysis of, of uh, how many... So, you know, we do one key comparison here, uh, and we actually do another key comparison uh, here on the inner loop, right? But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this happens uh, only, you know, uh, depend, uh, again, this, this happens depending on lots of things. Um, this happens exactly, you know, uh, n minus one times. So, so you know that we'll do the, the, this comparison here n minus one time, but but this is going to be on average, um, um, depending on what the size of the unsorted list is and, and that kind of thing. So um, anyway, so so yeah, that that's our key comparisons and the item assignments. Uh, we actually do have you know one item assignment here. Um, so, again, it depends a little bit on your definition of, of an item assignment, but, but usually you think of it only when you're assigning uh, the items in your list. So you wouldn't really count this because we're just assigning an index here. So that's just part of the algorithm instead of doing things to compare or move around our actual list of items that we're trying to sort here. So anyway, this would be a, an assignment. Um, 
and um, yeah, and this would be another one, right? Uh, and actually, um, the, uh, every time we do a shift, those would be items assignments as well. So again, it's not quite as straightforward to, to count up the number of item assignments. It's going to depend on how many times this inner do loop happens. Um, you know, and, and even this one here won't happen all the time. So that only happens uh, if the item was out of order, uh, uh, you know, on the outer loop. So um, anyway, so let's... Um, um, let, let's let's run the uh, insertion sort uh, here um, and see what we get. So let's continue it on to that point. Oh, um, I still have this breakpoint here. Checking to make sure we open up the file correctly. Continue from there. Oh, I forgot to mention um, it wouldn't be a fair test if we asked the next algorithm to sort an already sorted list. Okay, so surprisingly, um, often you get worst case behavior if you give an already sorted list. So sometimes some sorting algorithms uh, will, will have their best case behavior, but sometimes they'll have their worst case behavior if the list is already sorted. So, so you know, if we want to see what the typical performance is, we want to start with a completely randomized, unsorted list. So. Uh, the way I did that in this example code is I just reread in the uh, the list again from the file, so it was just all. So the 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 other advantage from that is is it's exactly in the same random order every time before we call the sorting algorithm. So it's as fair of a, of a, a test of performance as we can get looking at these. So um, if you look at the um, 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 uh, let me let me go here. The, the text again. It, it's a lot tougher to analyze the number of key comparisons and the number of item assignments that are, are going to occur. But in this case, the number of item assignments was correct from the textbook. Um, it would be n times n minus one over four. Um, and again, both of these are going to be averages as well because the number of key comparisons. Um, um, again, you know, on the outer loop, you're always doing a key comparison to see if the or if the item needs to be inserted or not. But you do a number of key comparisons on the do while loop uh, to f to figure out whether you're done shifting or not. Um, and that will again that will depend. You know, so so both of these are not exact; they're going to be averages. Um, but um, so, so but but they're both approximately n squared. So you know, it's n squared over four. I mean, this one is n squared minus n over 4, so roughly equal. Um, so, yeah, if we look at that, our actual number of iterations um, was uh, this, um, and we did roughly the same amount. So, so no, I mean, basically, the number of iterations we do, because both the, the number of key comparisons and item assignments are roughly uh, n squared, so, so the, these are both the same as well. Right, uh, and that comport that that that's uh, about what we'd expect according to the the theory, the the analysis of of, of the performance of these two algorithms. So in theory, we'd expect this number of average key uh, comparisons. Um, we got just a little bit over that. We, we'd expect this number of item assignments, and we got just a little bit over that as well. Although one thing, compare this back to bubble sort, right? So um, uh, the the number of of um, key comparisons is only about one half and the number of item assignments is only about one third of uh, bubble sort right um, that's because sorry that's because um, um, uh, yeah so it's only about one half because we're divided by four instead of two um, it's only about one third because about it's the same except for this is three times since we had three uh, assignments to do the swap. For the insertion, we're not doing three assignments. Uh, we're, 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 we, we're shifting items, um, and then we're, we're inserting them where it needs to go. So, so again, it's not straightforward, but, but this is the actual um, expression um, for the number of item assignments we would expect looking at uh, the code there. So, um, and, and the, the amount of time reflects that. So it only took less than half the time uh, real clock time to uh, perform the uh, um, <clears throat> insertion sort in this case. So, um, all right. So let's then look at our final one. So, like I said, uh, I didn't mention it back in chapter eight, but um, we had a um, um, another sort. Um, 
in uh, chapter 8, uh, where was it? Oh, there he is, a selection chart. Um, down here, selection sort. So the selection sort conceptually works um, um, in this way. Okay. So what you do for the selection sort, so, so again, if we have seven items uh, that are initially unsorted, what we're going to do is we're going to search for the, 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 the smallest item. So we're searching for the item, and we're going to select it uh, to uh, insert it into its correct location. So initially, if the if the list is unsorted, we could we could search for the maximum item and insert it. Um, uh, sorry, and, and and select the maximum item and then place it at the the last index. Or you could do it uh, the way that we do it in the textbook. So you could search for the minimum item, which is five, and select it to be moved to index zero. So for the first pass, we we first do a search, find the smallest item. And then we put it at index zero. The way we put it in index zero, since we want to do all of our sorting in place, we swap the, whatever item is in index zero with the smallest item that we found. So now, now after you do one pass, we've got one item in its correct location, and the unsorted portion of the list is, is items in index one to the end. Then you just keep doing that. So the next time uh, we would find the smallest item seven, we would select it then to be moved to index one. So we would swap 30 and seven and get seven place there, okay? So that's the way selection sort works. Let's, let's look at the, um, the code real quickly from our textbook. So, um, so for selection sort, um, you start off, uh, you have to search the whole list. So you notice that for selection sort, the outer loop goes from, from index zero to length minus one. Uh, less than length minus one because again you know at, at the end uh, one, once we find the, the second to largest value and put it at at the second to last index then we will we know we'll, we'll be guaranteed that the the last value will be at the last index we only have to do this outer loop n minus one times but initially we consider the whole list to be unsorted so the the, the starting index index zero here tells us the the that the unsorted portion goes from from index, which is zero for the very first time of the outer loop, up to the length of the list. Okay, so the inner loop here is where we are finding the location of the smallest item. So this inner loop is really just a search to find the minimum item, but it's a search to find the minimum item for the value uh, from index to the the last item to the length of the list. Okay. And the way you find the minimum value is you start by assuming that, that the first value in the unsorted portion of the list is the minimum, is the smallest one we've seen so far. And then we, 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 we search all the items at, at the index plus one uh, to the length of the list. Um, and if we ever find an item that's smaller than the smallest one we've seen so far, we remember it instead. So at the end of this inner loop, we should have found the, the smallest item in the unsorted portion of the list, and we're going to do a swap then. So, so we're going to swap the, the item, the smallest item, with uh, to its correct location at the be at, you know at, at, at the start of the list. Um, okay. So again, like before, we, we count up the number of iterations, the number of key comparisons, the number of item assignments, so we can show those. So to analyze this, the outer loop um, is going to always happen exactly n minus 1 times, um, and this inner loop is going to always happen exactly, you know, the first time through it happens um, um, the, for the whole list, uh, minus 1. Uh, and then the second time it happens for the whole list times n minus 2. So this happens n divided by 2, basically. So, so basically, the number of iterations of this is always going to be the same. It's going to be that n times n minus 1 divided by 2 expression. And since we always do um, um, one key comparison every time we do the iteration, the number of key comparisons is going to be that n times n minus 2. Um, and we're always going to do exactly one swap this time. So unlike bubble sort, well, uh, yeah, unlike bubble sort, uh, we only do one. Uh, so this is significantly less the, uh, assignments than we did in the other two algorithms here. So er we only do one um, swap, one um, item, one, one swap, so three assignments uh, each time through the outer loop. So, so we find the item, uh, select the item that we're going to put into the correct place and then and then we uh, actually swap it.
right? So there's only going to be three times uh, this outer loop, three times n minus one um, um, item assignments. And that's significantly less than either of the previous two algorithms that we, we saw so far. Um, but, um, yeah, so if I can bring this up here, um, sorry. Um, so, so yeah, the item assignment is not n squared, it's just n. It's, it's kind of linear. But uh, the key comparisons is, is the same as bubble sort. So, um, uh, so the, the number of iterations actually is more for these. Uh, so we only do about half the iterations of uh, insertion sort that we do for the selection of the bubble sort. So even though we do significantly less assignments, we, the selection sort still does a little, not quite as well as insertion sort. Uh, so let, let's, let's see that. Okay? So, so let's actually try that empirically. So if we go down here... Um, and um, um, actually, yeah, we've already got our breakpoints. So we'll actually let our uh, selection sort run. So we're going to reload that, the, that list of 2,500 items. And um, we're going to run our selection sort here. Um, so yeah, I mean, usually it takes about the same, maybe a little bit longer normally. So I don't know if it got stuck there or not. Let me stop that and restart it. Uh, yeah, things don't always work uh, correctly. So let's let's stop that. Let me let me remove all my breakpoints except for at the end and see if this will run this time. I don't know why that didn't run that time. Um, so let me rebuild this and rerun it and try and get down here to get our selection sort to, to work. So doing everything again. So loading um, and we'll try our bubble sort. Uh, took six seconds and we're loading. We're doing our um, um, Insertion sort, and then, yeah, now we did our selection sort. Um, so it actually happened faster than our insertion sort this time, which is a little bit surprising. But again, you know, elapsed time is not as good of, uh, is not as an exact as, of a measure as doing this performance of algorithm. So it depends on what other stuff is running on my computer and things like that. So even though um, we did, uh, so notice uh, the, the number of iterations was, was twice as much as what we were expecting. And we did... Uh, and, and the number of key comparisons is expected to be exactly the same as the number of iterations. So this is an exact number here. And, we, and indeed, we get exactly that number of iterations and key comparisons. So for 2,500 names, it's going to be n times n minus 1 divided by 2, you know, the same as bubble sort, right? But, you know, look, look at how, few, how, how much we reduced the item assignment, uh, both compared to um, um, bubble sort and... Um, um, the uh, insertion um, sort, right? So it was only three. Is only three times the number of items. So because we had to do three swaps, basically, um, uh, every time that we were through the outer loop, that we were selecting the item uh, to put uh, in, in into the correct place in the array. All right. So. Um, so anyway, the, I mean, you know, the point of, of showing all these is is to show that um, you know the that that's where these performance measures are coming from when, when we talk about uh, the number of key comparisons and the number of item assignments, and those can be used as measures to 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 compare the performance of different sorting algorithms. So we see, uh, you know, it does make a difference, um, uh, but it usually. Uh, of these three, all three of these algorithms are kind of n squared algorithms. So we'll talk about this next week. Um, so it takes about n squared iterations, uh, you know, loops for them to work, and, and n squared key comparisons. Uh, but uh, but yeah, usually um, the best one, just among these three, is going to be your insertion sort because it's going to do only half the number of the iterations and key comparisons of the others. Right. Even though the insertion sort does significantly less um, item assignments, so if your item assignment is really expensive, then 
you know, your insertion, your selection sort uh, is maybe going to outperform the insertion sort, right? Um, so that, that depends on how much it costs to copy the items in your array uh, or in, in your list of items that you're sorting here. So, um, okay, so to, to wrap up here, um, so, so we covered these and kind of looked at these in comparison. Let, let me show, um, uh, talk a little, just one final quick thing about um, this performance here. So, so again, let's go back to the item assignments here. So, so the point about this was, so remember the selection sort was only linear compared to, uh, you know, it was basically about n squared um, and three times n squared for the bubble sort and the insertion sort. But the point of this, you know, again, you know, the, this might not look like a really big difference, but you should you should remember that this is a log log graph. So you know, linear versus n squared performance is significantly different. So if I had a million items I needed to sort to sort, I would only have to do about a million comparisons for the selection sort, right? Well, three million, three times that. That's you know that that's not you know half. That that's that's many orders of magnitude. So for these n squared, I'm approximately doing a bill. Um, uh, so 10, ten to the sixth is a million. Ten to the ninth is a billion. So I'm approximately doing about a trillion, approaching a trillion um, assignments uh, for a million items. You know that, that that's a lot more than. T than twice as many. That's that's six orders of magnitude bigger uh, to do that number of times, and that that makes a difference in performance. Okay, but you know the key thing. Yeah, if, if you look at the key comparisons or the number of iterations through the loop, uh, bubble sort and selection sort were equal uh, in times n minus one over two. So you, so you can't see the uh, bubble sort. So they're both um, they're both at this green line. So insertion sort is is only half that. But, you know, again, if you compare that to, like, another algorithm, like n log n or n uh, or, or a linear n, uh, you know, these are both n squared for our sorting algorithm. So there are much better sorting algorithms. The best sort, you, you can't sort in linear time unless you do something really special. Uh, but uh, for, for, for general items like lists of strings or lists of integers, you can do uh, sorting in, in, in log n time. That's the blue line here. And, and that's not much different than, lin than linear performance, in log n. So, uh, so uh, an in log n sort like quick sort or merge sort is going to be significantly faster than any of the three that we talked about here that are n squared algorithms, right? So, so this little difference here won't won't make any kind of a difference, but but this really is a difference between n log n and n squared. Um, all right, but, but we will be talking more about that. So if you're not quite following me, we're ta talking about what I mean by n squared algorithms versus n log n versus linear or or order n algorithms uh, next week. So. Um, all right, so yeah, in summary, yeah, so, so we looked at these three algorithms. You should make certain you understand kind of the implementation of these in C code, and we, we compared the performance of these on, on different metrics, how many comparisons they had to make to do the sort and how many assignments they had to do to, to swap and move the items around and sort them. Um, okay, so that is it for today. Um, I will uh, see you then in our next video.